North Beach, it's Monday the 2nd of September, it's about 6 o'clock, just got down here, I thought I'd fully set up, get everything ready, get cast out, and see if we can catch a fish or two. It's, uh, it's quite a flat car at the minute, it's quite a broody day, it's talking about might get a little bit of rain, but uh, a bit sporadic, downpour. But I'm about to step up, I've started with 5 ounces, left rod. Look at that 14 foot carbon rod. Got two up and one down flapper big on there with basically uh, salted lugworm and squid on all three hooks. We've got a pulley panel on the right one. And that's with mackerel and squid wrap on there with just two size one Mustad Viking uptight hooks. But like I say, I've stepped up to six ounces because there's a fair bit of a tide on at the minute. I've not gone as far with, uh, with the second cast on the two up and one down because there's a lot of weed at the minute. So it's gone a bit closer and hopefully it can avoid the weed. But it's a stunning morning, there's not a breath of wind. It's 20 degrees where I was driving here this morning. It's such a warm, muggy night. But I thought I'd start off with a scratch rig and just see what's about. Hopefully there's not too much weed and we're going to get dragged. Well, what a, what a view from the office, eh? What a view from the office. I'll show you where we are. I'll give you a 360 tour. And basically behind the back of the Shrag mustard oil, which is just to there, and they've got Haven Holiday Home just up to the left. Right, watch the rods. it back and the one above the lead the logworm and squid had gone. The top one was a bit bagged a bit and the bottom one was fine. But the bottom one I've got two uh, salted lug and a bit of squid and I've just wrapped it with a bit of elastic.
I've got really small hooks on this one, and uh, I've got a few blingy beads. Just, I was sort of like more of a dab, dab rig more than anything. But got size four on the top snood. Yeah, the size four, the size two, and then the one on the bottom is a size one. They're quite small hooks. Getting out warm already. A knock on the right hand one. Like the tide's settling down a little bit now. That first cast, it really was ripping. But I'm walking, it's about 20 yards to my left, casting it 45 degrees to my left. Just walking back and paying out as much line as I can, just letting it settle. They are setting pretty much in front of me now, so. I'll give it a couple of minutes and bring it in, see the look at the state of the bait. I don't want too much weed building up on the line. But how are you guys all doing, alright? This is a good thing about beach fishing. I get time to sit back and relax and uh, have a chat to the camp for a change. I've been really enjoying the time on the rivers. Uh, some really good sessions. Down at Posick, a nice sort of like 45, 50 pound of on the whip and the feeder, but mainly on the whip, five meters to six meters to hand. Lovely great roach, all cracking about a pound mark. Big rug, loads of hybrids, about just over a pound, a pound and a quarter. A really good session. And then a good session down at Ludden Bridge on the River Am. Mainly all on the feeder. Just seemed to get the feeding right. It was bright hot bank holiday Monday. Loads of boat traffic, but it just uh, fed three uh, 60 gram feeders at the start, left it 20, 25 minutes, went on, the, went on the whip, caught a few ropes, back on, and then every time we just went a bit slow and iffy, the bike sort of like got a bit wary, came, we just put one more feeder full in, big bait up feeder, load of casters, load of sweet corn, two mills and squats. Let it settle for 25 minutes, back on the whip, and just kept doing that all day long. I only give it to about quarter past 12, and then that was enough for me. A couple of good sessions on the uh, river stick floating in there. How are you guys doing anyway? You've been out, been out fishing, any, any sort of good reports from the beach, I know it sort of like slows up a little bit now. Still plenty of doggies and a few rays and bits of people coming out. <coughs> I suspect that there won't be too many white in about a minute. Could be wrong. So I'm just fishing for anything, any flatfish, any dabs, flounders, whatever, sold. A 
now we're on the flood. I haven't gone too far out. Probably about 65 yards. Okay guys, first fish of the day, bit full of luck than anything else. Just under 34, 33 and a half centimetres. Nearly touching, put his tail there. 34, he's a little bit skinny, so we'll put him back. Decent white, it's a bit skinny. If he was a bit fatter, I'd have taken him, but it's quite skinny. It's all, it's all head, quite lean. He's gone. That was on the bottom bait, the feed, two black bug, and a bit of squid. But yeah, I'm going to have to sort this mess out now because the left one tripped out. I know there's another line. That was on the big rod. But again, I've only got size one. Big rod, I've only got size one. I've tied the spike in there. And a tiny little size two circle. When that tripped out, it went over the big rod line. So I was bringing two lines in together. And then obviously the mono on that is just wrapped up a bit. We'll have to cut a section out and put a new leading on to it. Right, let's sort this mess out. Well, I did have a couple of casts. The weed's a bit of a mare at the minute. The further you go out, the more weed, the more time. So, let's just warm back in, refresh the bait. And this one, we've got nothing to squid on. I've just literally cast it in the gutter. Literally 20 yards out. And then the other one, this one, not far beyond that, probably about 35 yards. It's less tide pull there, it's less weed. Hopefully that will settle down at a high tide. So I did get a couple of bands of knobs and a belt, a couple of head shakes, and two up and one down. Is that much weed? The time I've got it in, it's gone. All right, definitely time for coffee. Keep an eye on it. Because we've got the whiting on mackerel, next time I bring up the two, two up and one down. I'm going to try uh, mackerel on the bottom of that one as well. Try mackerel on the one above the head. Keep the love word on the top of it. Just see what they're preferring. No signs on the top two, but one above and left. Uh, two bags, so. Uh... Well, as soon as a clump of weed, it's like moving through him and catching. As soon as one hits the line, it actually got a really good.
another decent white in. Not quite as big as the other one. Still nice big fat fish anyway. We'll get this back. Ties well on the flood now. So they're all well fat, all well fed. <laughs> the smallest fish I've ever had. Look out for a pouting. Tiny. There are two white in and a pouting. In there. Is it a baby? Well, a quick update, guys. Quarter past eight. It's been really slow. I've had a bit of a switch of tactics and plan. So I've taken the pulley panel rig off. I've gone for two up and one down on both rigs. The right on rig, the Lafay long cast. I've got lugworm and squid. And the left one, I've put mackerel. A tip with a bit of squid on each one. Slightly bigger hooks on them. A nice double bit of mackerel on the bottom. Mackerel and squid on the top two. I'm just going to see what, what pulls the bites, if any. Uh, still a hell of a tide. I tried in close, not, not a thing, not a touch. I can't go out too far. It's just too weedy. So I'm sort of like settling on about 60, 65 sort of yards, just 70 at the max. Um, but the weed has sort of died down a little bit, but the tide's still ripping. I've stepped up to six ounces on both. And just casting them about 10 o'clock up tide in it. But it's just great to be out. A bit of a stiff breeze blowing now. It's coming off the land, so it's a southwesterly, so. I think we must be nearly at the top of the tide. But I'm leaving the rods as long as I can. I'm not tripping out. There is a big black seal just keep bobbing up and down in front of me and keeps working the same line backwards and forwards. But if we can get another couple of fish, that'd be great. Yeah, it's my last day off tomorrow and then I'm back to work, so. I just thought I'd get my head down and get a few films done. I've had about six films. Nicely backed up, so... I was thinking while well, I've got the time and... before the winter and the bad weather set in, because I noticed this morning I was driving here, it was half past five, it was still dark when I pulled up here. The time I got down here, the light was cracking through, but yeah, it's really fading fast now, the summer. Really fading fast. You get that chill in the evening now, in the morning. I might get out nice, but the evenings are definitely cooling down a lot. Yeah, and half past five. Ooh, I don't like that. We're starting to get light. Yeah, so I thought before all the bad weather starts, the wind and the rain and the cold, just get some films behind me and you got panicking on days we only got like one day off in a week or they're split up and the weather's absolutely lousy you're not forced to get out so <clears throat> it's nice to be back on the beach i've missed it Totally different, totally different to when I'm fishing the rivers. The rivers, I'm a lot, I'm a lot more serious. <laughs> I get my head down and try to get as much as I possibly can. I just that being brought up, started match fishing around the age of 15 and always on the rivers, the River Trent, the River Witham, River Welland 
all the drains around Boston and Lincolnshire and the fens and that and did a lot of match fishing up until my so like mid 20s and it's just instilled in me it's in my blood even when I'm pleasure fishing I, I like to work it and have four or five sort of lines on the go and bits and pieces it's just it just comes natural I think as well with the price of bait is you pay these days a couple of pints of casters and the squats and maggots and it's like 12 quid or something like that four quid a pint four pound fifty a pint for casters and that is <laughs> you need to make the most of uh, your day and catch every fish but you can make it cheap you can make it or cheaper you could have a look at my ground bait tips you know how to make the most out of a bag of brown crumb. Get yourself a couple of kilos, five kilos of fish meal. And get some molasses and crushed hemp and use some two mils. And a little bag of brazum. You can, you can sort of like tweak the mix and make it more fish mealy, make it a lot sweeter use molehill soil make it a lot darker sort of like heavier mix so there's still a lot you can do with brown crumb but i always put crushed uh, some ground coriander and desiccated coconut through mine and just yeah get your own wormery get a couple of wormeries don't spend 15 quid on a couple of kilos of worm or whatever they are now. Outrageous price. But it should be about another half an hour, about high tide. But I always find. I would just find it better on the ebb to me, ebb and, ebb, ebb and low water. You get the uh, white in at low water, seem to get the dabs on the ebb, start the ebb, so. It's early yet, it's early. Okay yeah, guys, I'm all done, back home. Just a quick uh, session today, about three, three and a half hours. I fished it till about 11 o'clock. Um, we just got too busy with people, kids, families, swimming near the lines and that wind got up and tripod went over a couple of times, I had to get the bag down there and just went really, really quiet towards high tide and start, uh, start the ebb. And again on the ebb, the tide was ripping, there's patches of weed going through and I thought oh, that's enough. So just, yeah, just three fish, a couple of whiting and a little tiny pouting, but uh, we got out, got, caught a few fish on ropey old bait. It's just anything that's just left in the freezer and uh, a bit of squid and mackerel and whatever. But uh, yeah, it was just a quick session, just sort of like easing my way back into it. So yeah, nice, quick, short session that one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Tight lines, all the best, guys. I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.